The pursuit of excellence has long been a hallmark of Harvard College. Since its founding in 1636, the college has combined promising students and distinguished faculty in a community that stimulates and inspires its members to develop their talents to the fullest. <laughs> students come from every state and around the world, from cities, suburbs, small towns and farms, from public, private and parochial schools, from diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds, and from across the economic spectrum. Something I think is important to stress is just how many different niches there are at Harvard, how many opportunities there are to discover different parts of yourself or to find a place where you can feel comfortable. I think for me the biggest part of choosing a college was, was asking myself where will I be able to find a place for me, will I feel comfortable here. And I'll let it go swinging. The opportunities here are just like endless. I mean, and the cliche that you know, so many opportunities at Harvard is actually true. I mean, anything you want to do, anywhere you want to go, this offers you a platform that you can do it from. Those are the questions that Nabokov appears to have asked himself in connection with that famous phrase from Alexander Pope, the proper study of mankind is man. Glorious piece of poetry on page 146. The liberal arts um, spectrum which Harvard offered and the quality of the professors that it had was just um, just too tempting to ignore. To get from here to here, there's, it's, it's a long reach. Harvard offers extraordinary academic opportunities. An undergraduate liberal arts curriculum with 3,000 courses, spanning the natural sciences and engineering and all the humanities and social sciences with over 40 areas of concentration. A world-renowned faculty an average class size of 17, special funding for undergraduate research with faculty mentors, and the largest university library system in the world, with 13 million volumes. Huge libraries, great professors, opportunities to study just about whatever, and if I change fields, um, still be in a place that has an excellent department in that area. This is a Schubert dance melody, and uh, Darren, take a moment to think uh, of a possible harmonization. The tutorial system of teaching and learning within departments and the freshman seminar program help provide an individual course of study for every student. What I found at Harvard was um, the diversity of academic opportunities. Uh, if you wanted to do science, you could do science. You could do a lot of heavy-duty research if you were interested in that. Um, but if you wanted to explore other fields, I think Harvard um, offers really an enormous spectrum of things to do. So what's the speed up rate now for the face recognition software? I knew that I was interested in engineering, and I knew that I wanted to pursue it at an undergraduate level. Harvard is very good in that it's able to blend a top-notch engineering education along with a world-renowned liberal arts education. Schools like Harvard, because of our size, you get highly individualistic attention, highly interdisciplinary and working across boundaries where teamwork is an extremely important part of the educational process. This is a modified scanning tunneling microscope. The labs here are small enough that they really give everybody an opportunity to do something useful. And on the front, we put a semiconductor, like you hear about in the news. In anything you want to do in life, I think you want to have a passion. So you must get a joy out of what you do. And so getting students involved in early stage in research gives you a lot of room to grow. It's a very nice thing to see that at the end of three or four years, how well you grow as a critical thinker. The real strength in the future will be creation of the broadly trained engineer, the broadly trained scientist, whom I really like to call as the Renaissance engineer. The tutorial system, class size, and faculty interaction create an intellectual climate rivaled by few institutions. How do I office hours afterwards? That's the way. This semester I took a history class called Early American Exploration and Enlightenment, and there were five of us in the class, plus uh, uh, Professor Susan Lively. 
I went in casually to her office to drop off a paper. She saw me and she says, oh, Dominique, please come in and sit down. So we sat down and chatted for 30 minutes about academic things and non-academic things. When I started talking to her about my thesis, she rattled off a whole bunch of books that she thought might help me in preparation for my thesis. And then she continued that by emailing me more books that she found. And actually, this Friday, we're going to be going to her house for dinner. My interest has been economics and international relations. So I met a lot of eminent professors, different ministers from countries who were giving talks, and that gave me a very good perspective on my major. And so I came out, I think, not only feeling socially very happy, but also academically very satisfied with the education that I have and very confident as I move on into the world. And the college's graduation rate is 97%, among the very highest in the nation. Almost all Harvard students live on campus for four years. Housing is guaranteed. The freshman dean's office puts freshman roommates together, and all the freshmen live in dorms in the old yard. Most of the rooms at Harvard are actually um, arranged in suites, so that there are several bedrooms and a living room and a bathroom for two to six people. Here we are at Wigglesworth. Top floor, freshman dorm in the yard. Here's my common room. Um, I have a roommate from California, Wisconsin, and Christy from Wyoming. Hi. My bedroom's over here. It's kind of small and cozy, but I get the single next semester. After freshman year, all the students move out into particular houses, and I believe they're 12 houses. I absolutely love house life, simply because it's a community of about 500 people, and you're always meeting new people every day. Being in a house has been one of the most wonderful things about my being at Harvard. What we'd like to discuss next week is the direction Students of Students run over 250 like different organizations and programs on campus. Everybody's got the right to be happy. In four years at Harvard, an undergraduate can see, direct, or act in 200 musicals, operas, and plays. You remember that wonderful write-up I had in the torch? Yes. It said I was bound to succeed in anything I went into. <laughs> Holy jeez, the torch! <laughs> Students perform in two major orchestras. They sing with a dozen different vocal groups. Some perform in ethnic dance troops. Still others play in a marching band, small ensembles, jazz bands, and chamber groups. The 
other major news publications. In addition to publishing a daily newspaper, Harvard students produce radio and TV shows and publish dozens of papers, magazines, and books on a wide range of topics. The world has gone bad today, and good's bad today, and black's white today, and day's night today, but most guys today, the women rise today, are just silly jiggles. By the time they graduate, two-thirds of all students get involved in community service, often to the benefit of Cambridge and Boston children. Anthony, right here. One more, here, this way. Oh, good try. Harvard maintains a tradition of athletics for all, with expansive intramural programs, top-notch facilities, and the nation's most extensive intercollegiate program. There are 41 men's and women's teams, the most in the country. More than 60% of the student body participates in varsity, junior varsity, club, or intramural sports programs. I grew up in a really small town up in Maine in the mountains, and I was really anxious to get to a, a bigger place where there was more happening. I wanted to be able to go and see a movie on a Friday night, or go to a cafe, or see street musicians, or see traffic, see cars <laughs> going by. The area right around Harvard and Harvard Square is a lot smaller and feels a lot more community-oriented. So I, I had no problem with the transition at all. I love it here. Only a buck. Step right up here. Progress for a buck here. I try to go out to Boston as much as possible. Being from Mexico City, I'm used to the excitement of the, the big city, so one of the things I like about Harvard is the small town atmosphere, but then you can also jump on the T and, you know, you're in Boston in 15 minutes and there's a big city excitement. people here who are really great at everything. Like there's a girl down the hall who's in the Bach Society Orchestra and there are other people down the hall who are on like sports teams. And so it's a really good mix of people. It's people who are really good at whatever it is that they like to do. When you actually get here you realize how diverse this campus is racially, economically, academically, and every way you can think of. One thing that I'm really going to take away with me are the friendships I've made here and I just, I sincerely believe that the reason why Harvard is so great is simply because of its students. They're just a very interesting group of people. People I think are universally passionate about things, um, but they're not all necessarily just passionate about academics. They're passionate about, you know, life in, in all sorts of forms. It's really easy to find a lot of people that are looking to strike the same sort of balance as you are, whether that be leaning towards academics or more towards having fun and experiencing all of life. One of the main reasons that I chose to come here was that I was sitting down in Loker Commons and we were having the best conversation. It was all about normal things, movies, friends, high schools, extracurricular activities but it was like on a whole nother level. We had such a great time, it was a very dynamic discussion. And I thought, if that's the kind of discussions and the kind of socializing that I'm gonna be doing here, that's, you know, really worth coming. All through high school I was intending to go to probably a, either a small college in Minnesota or one of the, the state schools. In my school, it was never really stressed that any of us would go out of state, let alone to an Ivy League. I didn't think I'd make it here, and I'm so glad I tried, because if I hadn't, I would have been missing out of the experience of a lifetime.
studying to the last minute 